I'm going to begin uh, just by asking me, I don't remember this story when it was, but it happened at the time in the news. I was wondering, was it a big story in, in France? And I mean, just if you didn't know too much about it, when you sort of dug deep, it's an incredible, huge story, isn't it? I mean, it's so political as well. So political, yeah, and it was, uh, I mean, I don't, actually, I don't remember the story at the time because uh, I think I was like maybe not very uh, concerned about the uh, politic or... Yeah, I was uh, young at the time, but when I, I really discovered that story with uh, the script, actually, and uh, and uh, that's why also I like to make films. You know, it's to educate myself, and uh, yeah, it's 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 really it's amazing. It's uh, it's 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 a crazy, and I think it was like a very good idea from Thomas to make a film from it because um, it's a the subject for for cinema is perfect and um, it shows really like it's the perspective from those people and uh, it humanized you say that humanized the, the also the, the the story and we only because we we only know it by you know the 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 the, 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 the media and the fact that here we have like yeah really the the we can. We have it. F we 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 have the perspective from those people, and I think it was necessary. Because yeah, I mean, I'm not just saying this to you because I'm sat here with you, but for me, this was really your story. I thought this the story for me belonged to the the families left behind. That's yeah, that was the most exactly. interesting yeah, yeah, part yeah. for this for me. Yeah. Um, but that must have been a huge part of the appeal for you as well, because so often in these movies, it's always about the crew. It's always about the the people in the courtrooms or in the submarines. But it's yeah. so nice and refreshing to have a movie that's about you for a change. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, you mean yeah, the the wives and yeah yeah, yeah it's of and and it, they also I mean they represent also the anger you know uh, I mean yeah they they, uh, they are like us spe spectator it's crazy how they were left away and completely uh, you know they were uh, yeah people lied to them uh, and so this is. Also, we can we can um, they they express the anger and the frustration that that uh, of this of this of this whole thing. I mean, of this story. It's just so incredible. I think that we are still even now we are still um, we feel so um, yeah frustrated about it. Because I was trying to think of another sort of vocation, another job similar to the Navy. And I mean, acting sort of came to mind. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not, obviously, when actors go to a shoot, they expect to come home alive. There's not really a risk of death, so it's very different. But the idea of leaving your, your family for, for chunks at a time, I was wondering, everyone calls acting like a dream job. But is that still quite a difficult aspect of it? Because I guess every time you take on a movie, often you have to be away for two months, three months at a time in different parts of the world. It must be quite difficult because you're always away from friends and family. Is that, is that the one downside to an otherwise wonderful job, would you say? It's true that it's part of the job. Like you have to accept it. Um, but I think it's, uh, it's also, for me, I mean, it's something that I like because... Um, I like to find myself in, uh, in uh, like far from my um, uh, base, and uh, in it's uh, I can also <laughs> experience life. You know, um, I mean it's it's something that is tough for sure, but I like it. And it helps me also to 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 um, to to create in a way. And just finally, before I go, I mean, you got to have a couple of really big, powerful scenes, and one in particular with Max von Sydow, which was, mm -hmm. I mean, he's a, like a, a real legend of cinema. What was that like to to, to collaborate with him in in, in that p particularly that moment when you're confronting him at the sort of press conference? You know, it was very touching to have him in front of me, and he couldn't really um, remember his lines. So when I did the scene in the 
in the, the, the but maybe it's not nice to say that, but uh, it was another actor. And uh, it was hard for him to, yeah, focus. But, you know, yeah, it, it, it was extremely moving. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys! To be like, uh, that uh, angry in front of him because I could see that he was like trying to, you know, just uh, remember his lines. But uh, you know, cinema is made also of uh, of this. It's uh, moments like this, de grace, grace. There is a human aspect also when you shoot films like besides the, sh the shooting. You see what I mean? Like uh, the life that goes with the shooting and as we as I, we, we, we said just uh, before you know when you are like far from your family and but there is like it's true that it's really like a family when you shoot a film you know you you are it's so intense to be like also playing the character but not only like the life that you have around this can be also very uh, intense and uh, and um, it's, it's something that I really enjoy because I always felt, you know, in my life a little bit, uh, um, you know, like a misfit in a way. So to be part of this family, it's, it can be also very um, um, uh, warm and chaleureux, you know. I mean, this is obviously your second time working with Thomas. I yes. mean, he's a bit of a master behind the camera. What's he like to, to collaborate with? And what drew you back in to working with him again? Well, I think we enjoyed working together the first time. And uh, and then so so it was uh, it was just a matter of time that we would end up working together again. Um, and he's very vivid, imaginative, and and uh, and fun. And every movie you see from him, it's it's uh, it's always a different movie. It's a different genre. It's a different tone. It's a different style. But it's always about the people in the movie. That's his main focus. And um, yeah, that's what I think uh, made him the really the right director for this movie. So he could bring the scope uh, that the movie obviously has, but at the same time, really focus on the characters that uh, embody the story. Because I think your character has to get into the mindset. Well, so you have to get into the mindset of someone who's facing death, who's coming to terms with the fact that they might not be alive this time next week. For no. How did you get into that mindset? And is that quite a difficult one to shake off at the end of the day's shoot? You know, bring you. Well. I, th I think the will to survive was bigger than than accepting death. Of course, they know it's coming, but. As soon as you know it's coming and you surrender to it, then that's the end of it. And and the will to survive is also one of the main components of the of the film. I think um, it's it's this will to survive for the people that you love and that are outside and basically that are family. So to some extent, it's also a family movie, and and it shows um, the incredible strength that you can uh, experience in the, in, the, in the most horrific circumstances. The incredible strength you can experience. Um, because of the love that you feel for uh, for either your wife or your children or, or both. And also, I mean, there's a great camaraderie and a great love shared amongst sort of crew themselves. I was wondering, I mean, obviously it's quite it's quite different, but it, that feeling of everyone being in it together, everyone stuck in the same place for a short period of time, did it feel in some ways akin to shooting a movie? Was there, is there a sort of parallel to... Yeah, like, to some extent, to some extent, yeah, there's, there's a band of brothers type of, of feeling that, that, that you have when you, you spend a lot of time with a lot of people for, uh, for, for yeah, well, that, that's obviously you, you, you link up and you connect and, and you bond. And it felt, I mean, I was, it looked like it felt quite claustrophobic. Was it quite claustrophobic? And also, it looked like you had to get wet a lot. You know when you, when you go in the bar for too long, your fingers... Yeah, yeah, we were permanently <laughs> wet. And that, to be wet is one thing, but to be wet with clothes on, that's, so we were uh, wet with uh, clothes on and that was uh, that was not so comfortable but then again it's nothing close to what the real crew members must have been going through so um, I would not dare to complain but it was kind of claustrophobic as you can imagine the, the you know the, the compartment was completely uh, built on scale 
Um, so we were there for, I don't know, with, with 20, 20 actors and then 25 crew members, and then we had a heat wave. So actually it was, it was more warm than it was cold. Uh, just wondering, if you were stuck on the seabed, uh, what would you miss the most? Not including sort of family, not, not, not people, just in terms of like, is there a thing that you'd most miss from the outside world that you'd, you'd love to? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think such an experience um, w would reveal also a very specific... Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's, that's hard to say. It's, it's a funny question, but <laughs> I don't know. I choose football. You choose football? Yeah, like yeah. soccer, you mean? Yeah, yeah, soccer. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, obviously, you're, you're starring in the same movie here as Colin Firth and, and Max von Sydow. I mean, you didn't really shoot any scenes with them. Is it odd no. that you're a part of this same project? You're, you're the faces of this, this yeah. movie together. And yet, in some ways, it must feel like they were on a completely different film. I, I only met him <laughs> once, uh, I think, uh, during prep. Uh, we had a dinner, and, and that was the only time I met him. Too bad, I would have loved to, to shoot scenes with him. But yeah, hopefully next time, who knows? But that must mean when you do watch the film back, you can almost watch it like an audience member because there are so many scenes that you're not a part of. So even though you're the lead role in this film, there must be a half the movie you can watch it like I watch it in some ways, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's what I, I like about it. I'm like, oh, this scene, hmm, how does it, okay, good, nice, wow. And I mean, there's some really exciting projects coming up for you. You worked with Terence Malik. Yes. I mean, what was that experience like? I played like a supporting part in I that. Mean, it was really exciting. Yeah. It was really exciting. It's uh, a very unique way of working, of course. Was yeah. this, did it take a while to get, to get used to? Did you require no, I, I shot for two days. Oh, Normally, I was, I was supposed to shoot a bigger part, uh, but I was still shooting another movie, and then schedule-wise, we couldn't make it happen. But I definitely wanted to work with him, so I, I, I didn't mind if it was one day, half a day, two days, five days. Um, so I was very happy to be part of it, even if it was just for two days. So there was not a lot of, um, I mean, there was not a lot of time for me to get adapted to anything. I just had to jump and be there, and no, I loved every second of it, yeah. And just finally, uh, you, you, am I right I'm thinking you're working with Margot Robbie and Justin Kozel's next one? Yes. That's right, cool. Yeah. Yes, and also in March, there's also another film still coming out. It's called Mustangs, oh, yeah. about a, a rehabilitation program for, for inmates in the, in the U.S. So you're quite busy then? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm young. It's now that I have to do it. It's not. It's not when I'm 85 that I gotta that I gotta jump into life. It's right now that I have to do it. When you're 85, over that maximum side, you can still work with Thomas Spinter. Like exactly. Really that would be fantastic. <laughs> I'm gonna begin. I mean, it's an incredible story, and I've got to be honest. It's one I didn't actually know anything really about until I saw it yesterday. Um, and one with so much cinematic potential, it must have come your way, and you must have just thought, yes, this is exactly the story I'd like to tell right now. <laughs> Well, um, this is a quite unusual thing for me to do, a submarine movie. It's, uh, it's not my um, normal path, I would say. But when M Matthias Schoenart sent me the script, he, he, was on the, he was attached and he wanted me to do it. Uh, so I read it with him in mind and, and I was moved by it. It was that simple. I, it just came, came to life immediately when I read it. And I felt there was a, an opportunity to elevate this from being a political thriller to be something grander uh, about life and death. Because you made Submarino, but that wasn't actually about submarines. It was so not was about submarines. Was this your way of just finally going, I've done it? <laughs> I made Submarino, which was about dope addicts yeah. and losers. Yeah. Whereas this is about bravery and heroes, I guess. Because, I mean, we, we do see um, films, oh, I, I think that we, we get sort of films every year about taking it to the absolute limit where we see how far the sort of human condition can go when we're facing death effectively. What do you think it is about that um, particular theme and that strand in cinema that makes such compelling viewing? Because it's, it's always, I found it so fascinating to, to watch characters on screen that are sort of facing up to, to what looks like their sort of definite death, I suppose. Right. Well, my wife is a priest, okay? So we talk about life and death. But she's, she told me that in general, uh, people have stopped talking about death. There's a focus on youth and about optimizing your life, but there's no real sense of it's all gonna end. And she claims that it's become um, the obligation of the movie, of the, of the world of movies and literature to talk about these issues. And that's where people dig into this, to th those grander issues. And I, I'm watching that on screen also becomes very specific suddenly. Uh, when they dive three minutes to get air. It's super uh, basic and essential and uh, cut down to what life is about. It's about trying to get air, right? 
because I, I thought, I mean, this, this film in some ways, it felt like three parallel stories. You had the, the, the guys trying to survive, mm -hmm. then you had the, the wives and families left behind, and then mm -hmm. you obviously had this really political undercurrent to it. And in regards to the, the politics, which really enriched this tale, um, I was reading something about that there could have been an actor playing Pu Putin at one stage, and that fell through. What was the kind of story behind, behind that one? Was, was there ever an idea to actually have someone in the movie playing, portraying it? Well, I, I was never threatened to uh, <laughs> to cut out uh, the Putin character. Yeah. I I just didn't like the idea of having Putin in there because it, for me, narrowed it down to becoming a political thing that I will leave to the journalists. Mm -hmm. Putin was only 100 days into his work at this point. He was on vacation when this happened. And I, I find the story amongst those sailors and their wives uh, and the, the Northern Fleet was grander and more interesting. And also, I didn't want to see yet another actor trying to betray Putin. Mm. I, I felt it was too small somehow, so uh, we cut it out. And I was wondering too, I mean, it's an incredible cast for starters, but Max von Sydow really stood out as, as just someone that we just don't get to see too often on screen at the moment. And it, it just it sort of warms my heart seeing him back on screen because he's such a, an incredible performer with such an incredible history. Um, what was it like directing him in this instance and, and collaborating with, with him on this project? Well, for me, Max von Sydow is a legend. He, he's like, he's all the Bergman movies, and he's got such a long, rich, fantastic history. And then he's the warmest and nicest man to meet. I, I really enjoyed working with him, and I can reveal to you that, that on his last day of shooting, which was in the church at that funeral where the kid refuses to shake his hand, uh, when he, he was done, everybody, everybody stood up and applauded him, all the extras and the film crew, and all the way out to his trailer, he, there was like this line of people just applauding. He's just done so much for movie, <laughs> the, the movies over years, right? Yeah. Uh, it was amazing. And that, that's also sort of at odds with the fact that in, in the movie, every character sort of wants to spit at him. And every, <laughs> in real life, everyone's clapping him on the way out. <laughs> in real life, people just loved him. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah he, he's, it's, it's a tough character in this movie, yeah. right? And just finally, I mean, I was going to ask you sort of what, what's next for you, because I mean, one, if you look across the course of your career, there's no two projects feel the same. It feels like every project is so different from the next. And I, I mean that as a compliment. I mean, I'm just wondering, yeah, what, what you've got sort of lined up, I suppose. Well, my next project uh, will not look anything like uh, Kursk, that's for sure. My next project is Danish, and I'm writing it myself with Tobias Lindholm, uh, another, my co-writer and, and a director, by the way. And it's a celebration of alcohol. It's, uh, we won the Second World War with a, with a drunk. Uh, that's what we could keep coming back to in the <laughs> script. And uh, General Grant w won a war as well. And Hemingway did fantastic work under the influence. And uh, it's, it's, it's an acknowledgement of how far you can get with alcohol. Right. Well, that sounds, like, sounds like a good one. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Yeah.